in of soils. So we'll go ahead with the second fourth problem. Fourth problem on the consolidation of soils. The statement goes as follows. In the figure as shown in below, it is shown that the it is a strip footing. This, this particular is the strip footing. So this is the strip footing. Strip means it is a continuous footing. It is for the load bearing wall and the wall uh, th that means above the this particular footing there is wall and there are three number of the uh, there are three number of the floors in the building so it's for the load bearing structure and the properties of the clay layer are given as below cc that is the compression index given it as 0.08 e not which is equals to the initial void ratio of the soil before placement of this particular strip is given it as 0.4 at the gamma saturated that is the unit weight of the saturated clay layer is given it as 20 kN per m cube the first thing they have asked us to evaluate the consolidation settlement if the pressure which is acting on the footing is 40 kilo pascal and also they have asked in the second part to evaluate the immediate settlement or the elastic settlement for that the elastic properties of the soil are given which is the young modulus of the soil es which is the 50 into 10 raised to 3 kilopascal and the poison's ratio which is the ratio of lateral strain to the linear strain which is equals to 0.4 and also the influence factor this factor takes care of the account of the rigidity flexibility and also the location of the imposement of the stress and also the type of the or the that particular footing that you are placing it in the soil so this particular influence factor changes as your footing changes the type of the footing changes and also it changes as the rigidity and flexibility parameters of the rcc structure because this particular footing is obviously made up of the rcc that is reinforced cement concrete so as the rcc property changes rcc material property changes this particular flexibility and the uh, rigidity concept will uh, change and based on that the influence factor will change and for uh, it is given it in the is uh, 6403 code uh, it's, it's given in the table form but here uh, we are not asked to evaluate this particular influence factor just directly it is given it as 1.75 and they have asked to calculate the uh, immediate or the elastic supplement of the soil and also they have asked us to calculate the consolidation settlement and you uh, as we have seen that the total settlement has got divided into three components one it is the elastic settlement another is the primary consolidation settlement and third is the secondary consolidation settlement or the creep settlement which occurs at the constant effective stress so he this problem covers the total uh, settlement that means here we are not uh, considering the creep part we just considering the elastic or the immediate, immediate settlement and the primary consolidation settlement so we will go ahead with this particular evaluation of the uh, primary consolidation settlement So, uh, from the basic property, you can calculate the primary consolidation settlement as follows CC H divided by 1 plus E naught into log to the base 10. Uh, P is the uh, original or the existing pressure before placement of the footing plus delta P, which is the additional effective stresses because of the placement of the structure divided by the initial effective uh, stress that is. P not dash so remember you are bothered about the evaluation of the effective stresses at the beginning of the problem so P not dash is nothing but the average effective vertical stress before placement of strip footing and also this particular effective vertical stress has to be at the center of the compressible layer.
I remember uh, in this particular case the thickness of the clay layer total thickness is given it at 7 meter but the foundation is being placed 1 meter below the clay layer so therefore you are bothered about only this particular zone so hence you need to take care of this particular thickness into well while evaluating the primary consolidation settlement so therefore here h is the important part which is 6 meter not the total 7 meter remember because this particular footing is being placed and this particular strata i am considering to be a compressible layer not the total obviously the total part is compressible if the load is being placed at the ground level then i have to consider the total part into consideration he says the load is placed one meter below the ground level so therefore i need to take the thickness of the compressible layer into consideration here it becomes equal to six meter and uh, the initial uh, effective vertical stress you need to calculate at the center of the clay layer remember this is the compressible layer so at the center you need to take the effective stresses this is the center line of the compressible layer this is center line of compressible layer so center line which means that this particular distance is 3 meter and uh, the groundwater level is at the footing footing level the ground level is at the footing level so therefore uh, p naught dash will be equal to you you, yeah, you need to uh, evaluate first of all the dry density but for the evaluation of the dry density uh, you have not been given with the g value and uh, you not is given yeah obviously but the dry density i'm i'm assuming that uh, because in order to evaluate the effective stress at the center of clay layer you need to know the dry density of the for this particular above layer which is above the footing of the of this particular step footing so gamma d value which is nothing but g divided by 1 plus e naught into gamma w but for that g neither the g or nor anything data is given however however you can calculate uh, g value by the back calculation but I am not bothered about all those. So directly, I will take this particular density as a 21. So, uh, as a 20. So, 20 into 1 plus 20 into 3 minus I will take gamma w as 10, 10 into 3. I am considering gamma w as 10 kilonewton per n cube. Directly, uh, it will become 20 into 1 uh, into 20 into uh, 3 gamma sat. And if you take a piezometer, insert piezometer at the center, it will rise to this particular level. So therefore, uh, therefore uh, you, you will get it as 10 into 3 as a pore water pressure. So this, this component 10 into 3 is the pore water pressure. And this particular component is the total stress, sigma. So sigma minus u will become equal to sigma dash, which is nothing but the effective stress at the center of compressible layer, remember. So the effective stress at the center of compressible layer will become equal to 80 minus 30 which is equals to 50 uh, 50 kilo pascal uh, let me check it's a 20 and 60 80 80 minus 30 yeah right so initial effective uh, stresses will become equal to 50 kilo pascal but the uh, because of the additional imposement of this particular stresses uh, because of the strip footing they have given that the pressure acting on the footing is 40 kPa but if you are considering that the 40 kPa is acting over a very small finite area and then you need to probably divide this particular like this way the, the, the stresses will be uh, distributed over a larger area as you go deeper and deeper into the ground and this particular angle is two vertical to one horizontal that means if you are going two vertical below you need to go one horizontal so therefore this particular distance will become for three it's become 1.5 meter this also become 1.5 meter so the existing area was 1.2 into length because st strip footing is continuous length is length is more than a 10 meter maybe up to the property or up to the length of the wall let, let's suppose so but that length is not available with us so therefore will take the area as the 1.2 area as 1.2 into the 
ऑप्शन विच इज देर in this particular option you will not forget the answer in this particular option so uh, conservatively they have taken that the 40 kpa is acting at the center of the clay layer conservatively so therefore if you take it 40 kpa which is acting at the center of clay layer then uh, delta h will become consolidation primary consolidation settlement will become equal to cc is given 0.08 1 plus e not 1.4 into thickness 6 meter into log to the base 10 40 plus uh, initially it was 50 divided by initial stresses 50 if you do it then you will get the delta h value as uh, i think you will get it as equals to 87.5 mm so get the consolidation settlement as 87 0.5 mm and if you compare it with the option yeah you will get the one option very close to this 88 mm as the 89 mm but uh, one thing in this problem is that if you go and solve it by this particular area distribution technique that means the stresses which is nothing but force divided by area force over here is remaining it as a constant but the stresses imposed will vary inversely with the area so the area initial area divided by final area not not the initial area i'll call it as area of the footing to the area of center line of the compressible layer is nothing but the stresses acting at the center line of the uh, compressible layer to the stresses acting on the footing level so if you do it then area at the footing level meter square divided by area at the center line of the compressible layer we calculated it as 4.2 over here so this is the area at the footing and this is the area at the center line of the compressible layer we have calculated this particular value 1.2 and 4.2 by considering the distribution stress distribution uh, as equivalent to be two vertical to the one horizontal slope so based on that you will get the stresses corresponding to center line in divided by into into stresses at the footing level it is given it as 40 so if you do it and if you take the this particular additional stress and if you place it in this particular expression obviously i'll tell you 30 mm and uh, it was not there in the option yeah but the none of these was one of, one of the option but this is the right way and the correct answer would be uh, the none of this so in that time the both options were correct uh, 89 and the none of these because uh, this is the, this is the correct way this is the correct way to calculate the consolidation primary consolidation settlement remember uh, not just by the stresses acting at the footing level you need to calculate the stresses at the center line of the compressible layer and the second part of this problem we have been asked us to evaluate the immediate or the elastic settlement and for that for that the properties are given like uh, mu it is given it as 0.4 e of the soil young's modulus of elasticity of the soil is given it as 250 into 10 raised to 3 kilo newton per meter square and uh, also influence factor if is given it as 1.75 and uh, that's all that's all it's given so immediate settlement si is given it as q net the pressure at the footing level into the width of the footing b into 1 minus mu square into if divided by es this is the settlement this is the immediate settlement or the elastic settlement and here this is the net pressure acting at the footing level so q net is the net pressure net pressure acting 
at footing level at footing level because of the placement of the footing and the, obviously the column will be transferring load to footing and footing will be transferring load to the existing strata and we are bothered about to calculate this particular elastic settlement because of the stress imposition on the soil due to the placement of the footing so uh, this particular si for this particular q net is directly given it has the additional stresses at the footing level equals to 40 kpa in the problem this is this particular statement pressure acting on the footing level is 40 kpa so it's a 40 into width of the footing given it as 1.2 meter into 1 minus mu square 0.4 square into influence factor given it as 1.75 divided by e as given it as 15 to 10 raised to 3 so remember you have to be conversant with the unit and also with the formulas as far as this particular soil mechanics and also the geotechnical engineering is concerned so uh, you, you need to multiply by all these factors So you get the immediate uh, settlement as 1.41 into 10 raised to minus 3 meters. So, uh, so if you convert it in millimeter, you will get 1.14 millimeter. So this is the immediate settlement. And if you look at towards the option, uh, yeah, you'll find the option number B has to be correct. But if you closely look towards this particular problem, where the consolidation settlement, or I'll call it as a primary consolidation settlement. It's something like 89 mm and the immediate or the elastic settlement as only 1.5 mm or 1.4 mm whatever it may be so if you take if you have you notice this particular values in uh, terms of the quantitative uh, way then uh, obviously this particular factor that is the primary consolidation has got a very very uh, significant role in deciding the bearing capacity of the soil remember so obviously the uh, bearing capacity of the soil has to be determined by the two ways one way you can uh, determine from the shear strength of the soil criteria and one way you need you are determining by particular this particular settlement criteria because as far as the codal part and everything is concerned the code cannot uh, code is suggesting that you cannot have the settlement values more than the permissible limits so if you if you are suppose if you are designing this let's suppose particular footing and then finally you are going to check it for this particular settlement values and if it is coming out to be more than the permissible limit then you need to resize your footing dimension in order to suit your primary consolidation settlement or i'll call it as a total settlement so in the problem if it was asked that the total settlement then it would be equal to 90.5 millimeter so this is a total settlement that a footing will going to experience this is because of the both primary consolidation and as well as because of the elastic or the immediate placement of the load so this finishes the problem number four in the consolidation of soil we'll move ahead with the another problem thank you